The astonishing thing to me about the late Pleistocene, or roughly 20,000 years ago, when the glacial development in North America was at its greatest, the geography of North Carolina was practically the same then as it is now. This seems intuitively impossible, but it was. All of the mountains, all of the peaks, all of the valleys would have been virtually exactly the same as they are now. The river courses have been here for uh, over 150 million years, and they wouldn't have changed much during the Pleistocene. The rivers would have been immediately uh, recognizable, even to the contour of the valleys and everything. It would have been the same. The same thing for the coastal plain. Uh, especially the upper coastal plain. Uh, all the sites of future cities and everything would be clearly identifiable, no problem. And when we were walking around in North Carolina, in uh, natural North Carolina, the butterflies, the grasshoppers, all of the insects, so far as we know, it had been precisely the same and easily identifiable. The same goes for the salamanders, the frogs, the lizards, uh, the turtles, the snakes, all of the herpetofauna and all of the small mammals would have been the same too. So a naturalist in North Carolina 20,000 years ago would have been able to identify everything that was small and um, everything that was green. One thing was absolutely amazingly different and that is about 300 miles north of the North Carolina-Virginia border there was an ice sheet covering North America that was equal to the size of the Antarctic ice sheet today, just 300 miles away. That's where we are approximately from the edge of the continental ice sheet. That ice sheet had consumed so much water from the oceans, taken out so much water, that sea level during the late glacial maximum was 400 feet below what it is now.